You can just try to boot, otherwise you need another machine. Just wait a second. Like it's working, but it's not showing. Try to shut down again. Nah, the, the uh, if anyone can lend me a machine, I can load it from the internet. Loading. It's based on review, maybe it's not loading a lot of stuff. Does that work? I have an RGB output. <laughs>
I can just try another machine. Can anyone lend a computer, perhaps, that works? <laughs> ah, it's loaded. Okay. Uh, how do I get to the... Excellent. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm Nikolaus Werneck. I'm going to talk about chipsort.jl. It's a CMD and cache aware sorting module. The fonts are still wrong. Sorry. It's a pity. Uh, so a bit about myself. I'm an electrical engineer specialized in computer vision. I have been using Julia only for less than one year when 1.0 was released. <clears throat> And I started uh, ShipSort as a learning project. I hope I can share what I learned with you. But I also hope it will have some invaluable result. And I think maybe we have. So our functions can usually offer twice the speed of the standard library sort. And that's usually just tested on integers and floats. Uh, and apart from that, I think this project is a nice demonstration of some Julia features in special generated functions, which I've come to, to see as a very important and unique feature from Julia. So the motivations of this project can be stated as two research questions, if you will. <clears throat> the first regards the what, and the question is, can we improve on the standard library sort? And of course, you might do that uh, in specialized applications, but in general, there's one thing you can try to do, which is to use parallelism. And so last year, Sophie Wilson's talk was a lot about how we should exploit more these parallelism features from modern processors. Today's Intel talk was about that also. So I don't have to convince you about that, I hope. Uh, the thing is, sorting is very well understood for the serial processors. Uh, and it's not trivial how you should adapt uh, these algorithms to the parallel case, but there are techniques for that, and I basically implemented some of them. I hope to popularize them here. Our second question uh, is that I wouldn't be happy to just have a binary blob with an executable parallel sort that works. So the question is, can we achieve a high performance with an abstract high-level language? And, of course, the language here is Julia. Uh, but the point is, I think this project is a good benchmark for languages. So it really allows us to compare languages according to some features like polymorphism, how they do compiling optimizations in special vectorization, and also what I'm calling here uh, custom optimizations, which is the ability to generate optimal code at compile time. And this is something that on C++ it's done with template metaprogramming, for instance. And I think in Julia, generated functions might, might be a good uh, uh, analog of that. Okay? So our project, uh, ShipsRJL, was mostly uh, an implementation of techniques that exist in the literature, especially this paper from Inoue and Taura, 2015. Uh, and our results rely a lot on Julia LLVM and on SIMDJL package. So thanks to Eric Schnetter and others. Um, and it's really kind of a collection of techniques that might be used in different ways that can be put together to implement uh, a sort. So we have sorting networks, multi-way merge, etc. And the star of the show is really the comb sort algorithm. But before we get more into these techniques, I wanted to do a small crash course for people not familiar with generated functions. So one example of what you can do uh, is suppose you have a, a function that has a for loop that the number of iterations might change according to your input. But the thing is you know that unrolling this loop uh, makes the function faster. But the compiler is not unrolling the loop for your specific case. 
So what you can do is write a generate, uh, generated function that outputs your function as this uh, sequence of assignments you see here. And in the, so you can see in the function on the left, we have a list of expressions and we can manipulate these expressions. So it's really a meta programming thing. So, but this function is not a really good example. Uh, a better example of a useful generated function is our implementation of sorting networks. So sorting network is the optimal sequence of comparisons you should do to sort n elements. So in this slide, we can see a sorting network for four elements and for 16 elements. Uh, and the code in the lower left here is the code that implements the four elements network. In many projects, they just implement each network like this, the concrete code down there. And what we do in ship sort is to generate the code from a data structure using a generated function, okay? So that data structure on top, it represents that first network, and then our generated function can produce this code in, in the bottom. And this data, data structure might even be found at compile time, running, for instance, the Bose-Nelson algorithm. So we have other techniques like the transpose and the merge that also use CMD with explicit vectorization and generated functions. You can ask me later about them. It's more important that we focus on the comb sort algorithm. Uh, so comb sort is good for CMD because it has lots of independent comparisons. Uh, and this algorithm works similar to bubble sort, except you run through the array comparing uh, elements with a large interval between them, and this interval gets reduced exponentially. Uh, and on ship sort, there's an important detail that we switch to insert on sort when the interval size becomes one. And one very cool thing I learned in this project here is that actually comb sort gets very nicely vectorized by Julia and LLVM. So here we can see on the left, it's an actual piece of code from my project. And there's no explicit vectorization and gets compiled into something that's using a lot of vectors. So this is very good. But how, how well does that work? Uh, so we did some experiments here to see, just comparing the time. Uh, we're just experimenting with arrays of integers, 32 bits. And so we have the running time of different techniques for different array sizes. The vertical axis here is time. The lower is better. The top orange curve is the Julia standard library. The bottom blue curve is a function that's basically that comb sort with insertion sort. And I found pretty interesting that it actually performs very well in this very large range of numbers. The other curves are these other techniques that have that utilize the merge and things like that. <clears throat> this last experiment just shows that other languages, they pretty much perform as well as the Julia standard library, and ship sort is outperforming them all. Uh, but the more interesting experiment is that uh, on different ships, we, we also get similar performance gains. So to conclude, uh, ship sort demonstrate many good Julia features, especially generated functions. It's available for installation on the package manager. For the feature, we still have to implement sorting of structures uh, and also multi-threading, things like that. And some open questions I leave to you is first, uh, you should have an analysis, com complexity analysis of this comb sort plus insertion sort algorithm. And also during this project, I came to see that metaprogramming seems to have some relationship with compiler optimizations. So is there some, some, something interesting we can do in the future in the intersection of these two things? So we can now move to your questions perhaps, and thank you. Oh, sorry. Let me the example. This? Yeah. It generates like batches and all of this comparison explicitly for different kinds of arrays. 
Ah, you mean ah, the, the actual code here. Yeah, this is pretty much the output. And it's really, so each vertical line here is one comparator. And each, you can see the min max lines. This is one comparator. Uh, I'm not sure what the order really is, but yeah. It's a different network, yeah. Yeah, you, you should only do this for small uh, uh, networks. For large ones, I'm not even sure it, there are proven optimal sorting networks. So this is really intended for small arrays. How, how small? 64, okay. This is, so the idea here is that this all runs on the registers. But you may wonder, right, you, you have these modern processors like EVX 512. Oh, uh, does it pay off to go larger and larger? So that's something you should still experiment. But this is really intended for smaller arrays. <clears throat> Sorry? Yeah, so one of the techniques I implemented here, it actually starts with making small sorted arrays, then goes on merging, things like that. Go back. Sorry? Yeah, uh, I hope so. Uh, yeah, so for, the, yeah, for this kind of case, we are really trying to make the code run on the registers as much as possible. So that's really the idea here. So you generate all these assignments, and if you look at the generated code, it's really sitting at the registers for a long time. But so how much relevant this is, I really didn't test that, but that's the spirit. More questions? Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks.